Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Quest Nutrition. Visit QuestNutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and tonight's guest is IFBB Pro, former team national champion, good friend, Gerald Williams. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Actually, I don't know if you've ever been on Live With. Where are you? I think you were on the radio show the last time we had you on. First time I've done the TV show, man. This feels like I'm elevating status in the world. This is great. You, you look very snazzy. You look like uh, you know uh, you're you're ready to go hit the uh, Miami uh, Beach clubs over there. Yeah, definitely not ready to tackle like the afternoon meetings. That's kind of <laughs> where we're at. <laughs> where, where are you working these days? So I'm an adjunct psych professor, or I guess it's I will adjunct meaning that I'm not tenure track, but a psych professor at Berkeley City College. Nice. So I'm teaching psychology over there, um, a few classes, and doing some consulting and evaluation with some of their programs. I do applied research for Oakland Unified Schools, so I'm doing program evaluation and scale development and data analysis and all the other stuff. Um, and then I've got a, a real estate business, actually. I've been kind of running that on the side, too. Um, and then I have a couple other community organizations that I sit on the boards of. So that's what I'm doing. No, well, you're busy. That's good. Busy is good, especially when you're busy. young. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of the best advice, there was a guy named Dave, and I think I was maybe like 21 years old. He said something like, Gerald, you need to make sure you have five streams of income just in case something happens. And it sat with me. And so now I'm old enough to have five streams of income. And so it... <laughs> and, you, and you have five good streams of income. That's the funny thing. Now, you won the T Nationals back in 05 and uh, yeah. the overall there. And that was, you were kind of on the fast track to success in bodybuilding. And then you took a little step back and you went to school, which was smart. And, uh, you know, you took some time off. You made the comeback uh, last year at the USA Championships. You finished second behind Cody Montgomery in that USA. And then you went on and won the North American in the heavyweight class and you got your pro card. And uh, all was pretty good. And then I, we hadn't heard from you. you. You hit that Ferrigno Legacy Classic at the end of the year. Um, placed top 10, I believe. And uh, this year you did the Golden State. And uh, then you decided to do this Dubai Sharu Classic. And you called me up, and I got to tell the story. And you said, Dave, I want to, um, I want to come on your uh, TV show. And I said, well, you know, I got a million people. I'm, I'm doing it. I didn't even know what you were doing. You're like, I'm competing this week. And I said, all right, you know what? If you place top five, I'm going to get you on for an interview. And sure enough as hell, you're the first person who texted me. Probably, you, you probably had just stepped off stage. And you said, Dave, I placed top five. I'm fifth. Uh, I'll be, when are we doing the interview? And here we are. Yeah, um, it definitely, you know, the year was interesting. I also got married earlier this year, too. Oh, so that was a Thanks. It, it's been a, it's been a def, definitely a lot going on from, um, you know, getting my pro card last year to really getting stuff going with that. And then I was really just burnt out, like literally like the amount of effort that it takes to compete. I had forgotten because I hadn't done it in seven years. Right. And so like physically, mentally, spiritually, everything, I was just kind of like fried. And so I took a step back from, you know, training and everything and really kind of focused on a, a project I was working on for a few months and then started training again and realized I'm not Kevin Leroni. I can't take four months out of the gym and eat crap and turn out to be OK. <laughs> so the Golden State was definitely a rude awakening as my, my pro debut was ninth. I was like, oh, um, and it was a good lineup, you know, um, Compton, Lockett, um, Ronaldo Gary, a few other guys. I was like, OK, this is real. And so um, we decided, cool, we're going to do the Ferrigno. And another tough lineup, Compton, Diasha, um, a couple other guys, Lockett, another guy from Olympia. So, I mean, that was a tough lineup. And then I was like, all right, you know what? Um, Chris had actually hit me up. He was like, you should do the, the Sharu Classic in Dubai. And I'm like, Dubai? And he's like, yeah, it's the 26th. And I'm thinking of it like, you know, that's like the week after Thanksgiving. Like, how am I going to tell my wife I'm going all the way across the world? <laughs> Four months into being married that I'm not going to be here. Um, but what ended up happening is I ended up taking her with me, which was good. Um, and so we, we spent a little extra time on the front side there, which is the last thing you really want to do, but probably one of the best things I could have done just to let my body adjust um, from there. But yeah, I went out there, um, did a lot of time with the fans and at the expo and just really, I, I think ultimately brought the best package I brought on the stage to date. So it was really, really great to, to have had that time and to really put that work in. I, I got to tell you, when you sent me those pictures, I was blown away. I, I, you know, I'm your biggest critic. I'm also your, your biggest advocator yeah. when you when you when you put it all together. That was the best look I've ever seen you bring to a stage, hands down. Period. Uh, glutes were crazy striated. Your back was was terrific. Your waistline was tiny. Uh, your conditioning was superb. You know, you might have gotten outsized by a little, a few of these guys, but 
by and far the total look you brought to the stage I thought was stupendous and I think if you could progress from where you are now I think that you you know you have a good future at doing really well uh, because not many guys have your structure you know and obviously that's what the judges saw back in 05 when you won the T Nationals and I think you brought that structure back with more muscle with great conditioning yeah um, I mean the, the feedback that I've overwhelmingly got is be bigger um, that's that's the feedback and you know I'm, I'm much more interested in the critical than the the praises and so definitely be bigger um, you know we, we made a couple mistakes at the Ferrigno um, and it was interesting I was listening to heavy muscle radio and heard Chris Aceto and I was like I mean, Chris is another guy who will not he will not blow smoke up your ass he'll tell you exactly <laughs> how it is the way it is you, you guys are the same way and so hearing that too like a couple weeks out really um you know, I talked to Matt, who Matt Berzicott, who is my coach, and we're like, you know, we just got to make you suffer as much as we can to get you to this place. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Um, and so, yeah, hearing that, you know, no one, you know, the, the guys that really tell it how it is, I really respect that because you guys are no nonsense. You know, you'll say you look good or you look like crap, and then you, you manage it from there. And so my goal was to have someone say, you don't look like crap, and to continue to move there. But, yeah, we know what we have to do is to, to be bigger. I think that has been overwhelmingly the feedback from this entire year is great structure you know we know how to get in shape now it's just there's got to be more tissue but maintaining the lines while growing that tissue well you know when you have a great structure usually when the muscle goes on that structure it's oh it's always seems to be in the right places i don't i don't know why but when you have good genetics it, it really helps a lot in <laughs> bodybuilding what what did you actually weigh on the stage you know, Dave, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I don't know what I weighed on stage. I don't know. I haven't weighed myself since October. Right. Well, how do you um, give how do you give updates to Matt when you when you send him into? We take pictures. Oh. We do pictures every week. He doesn't want to know uh, how much you weigh. No, we stop asking that question. Yeah. We we did it um, up until the Ferrigno. I think I was two thirty three. Right. Um, and then we said, really, we know what we need to do. We know we're not going to grow you to be this astronomical person in four weeks. So we want to get you in shape. Right. And so we focused on the the variables that were really important were the visuals at that point and. Like even after the show, I haven't weighed myself. I really just tried to right. just manage stuff and, um, you know, stay in shape for this guest closing another week or so, and then just keep going from there. So the scale hasn't necessarily been in the regiment. It will soon, but I have no idea. I'm gonna, if I had to guess, maybe two thirty, four, maybe. Right. Where do you, um, Where do you go from here now? I mean, what's what's next? Like, do you wait a whole year again to compete, or uh, do you? you know, jump right in, in the early part of the uh, year of 2017, what's, what's the, uh, the game plan? Yeah. So the game plan now is, um, like I said, I'm doing a guest posing at the Bay Fit Expo. Um, Jay Cutler is going to be there and Guy Cristiano. So I'm going to stay in shape for that. Um, and then I'm going to do the Cal Pro in May. And okay. so we, we tend to find that I do really well when I have something in front of me, um, when I've got to really continue to push and be linear on this track. And so, um, I think that gives me really six months to, to try and bring it bring it in. I mean, I think I might have sent you the pictures, the comparison from the Golden State, yeah. pre, like progress pictures to the other one. And it was like night and day. Um, and so I think I, I, given the way that we're working with my body and the way we're learning it, I think that amount of time is going to be really, really good. Um, just enough time to keep everything tight, try and put on some muscle and see what the next steps are. I think what ends up happening is sometimes guys are like, oh, I'm going to wait super long and then life happens and then things get loose and... That's not really how I want to play it this go round. Yeah, you know, um, obviously having a, a real job and profession and now you're married and everything like that, um, has that hampered your training or your ability to focus on, on you know, making improvements? Uh, no, I mean, I definitely think that I, I always kind of wonder, like, what would life be like if all I had to do was eat, sleep, and train? Um, then I also feel like I'd probably get bored somewhere along the way, too, with that. But, um, no, I, I think it's been good. It's just, it's challenging. I've got to be really, really tight with time management. Um, you know, I get up early, everything is structured. Um, there's not much free time or any time to be able to do anything like that. And so I'm really, really, really just regimented with everything. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been, it's tough. I always wonder what if, but, um, we're finding a way to make it work. Time management has really, really been the key. Um, and making sure that my wife is flexible. I'm trying to include her more into the things that I'm doing. Like, hey, let's go to the gym and take this video stuff now. Or, hey, get up and come do cardio with me. Or trying to incorporate her so it doesn't turn into the separatist type of thing uh, along the way. And people in my office are super excited. It's crazy. Like, I would have never thought, you know, it's like being an alien in an office, but everybody's like, they, they get behind it. 
Um, maybe because it's something that people aspire towards and they may not have the tools or the discipline to really jump into that level. But I do find people tend to try and make better choices or they, they ask questions and then I'm able to give them information and sometimes they roll with it, sometimes they don't. Um, but overall, I think I'm, I'm in a supportive environment that really helps me continue to progress and push um, in several different ways, not just as a bodybuilder, but as a person. You, you took off those seven years you know, from competing you know, while you were getting all your degrees and everything like that. How tough is it to get back into the sport? I know you were still young, but how tough is it to get back into the sport after such a long time off? I mean, the cobwebs, the rustiness, I mean, uh, how do you do it? I mean, how do you get you back into that competing mindset when you're away from it so long? Like, I, I look at myself now, I'm like, there's no way I could ever want to compete again. I just don't, I, I just, there's no way I have any desire to ever go back to that. Yeah, I mean, a, a part of it, I think part of that's why I had to take so much time off at the end of last year was because it, it was so mu it was so intense, um, the, the focus and the level of intensity the day after day. Um, and it, after six months of it, it's, you're, you're zapped. Um, I think now, you know, my stamina is up. You know, I did it last year. Cool. I've done it this year. We're nine months deep in the game this year. Um, I feel good still. You know, we're going to take a couple weeks of vacation at the end of the year, my wife and I, and then, you know, I'm back in the saddle the whole way. And so I think it's, I think the hardest thing is building up the, the, um, the stamina from, you know, the neurological side to really be able to take yourself to that place while training. Um, the discipline, I think, is something that's always carried over. Like, I was still working out. Like, I was playing hockey at UC Berkeley in grad school. Um, you know, I was, you know, playing directly hockey. I was still working out. You know, I was doing rock climbing. I was doing active stuff. Um, and I still eat, you know, five, four, six meals a day kind of in, in the middle. So some of the things were lifestyle consistencies that I adopted at a young age. And I'm sure, like, even yourself, you just kind of carry through um, to where you are now. And so really it was the level of focus and the level of intensity and now, as a pro, it's really be become the level of intentionality of, of engagement of other people. It's not just about looking good and training in the gym and having your meals. It's about how are you engaging people? Who are you, um, who are you showing up to be? How are you getting out into the world? What outlets are you pursuing? Like, though, it becomes even a bigger um, entity more so than just you know, looking like a good bodybuilder. And so I'm, I'm still continuing to grow in these ways and figure that out. But the comeback was really, it, it still was in me. I think it was one of those things, if I felt like I had walked away from it completely, it would have haunted me for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. And I never completely felt ready to jump back in, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. There's never a right time to almost do anything. So, yeah. Now, uh, we I gave Johnny that picture you sent me where uh, it was, I think, eight <laughs> weeks out from the Golden State where you showed me... Um, the Golden State was on the right, and on the left was how you look, you know, for this past show. And it's it's almost oh, yeah. like a world of difference. It's it's crazy how how much you improved. I mean, I sent them the pictures. I don't know if you got the back ones too. I mean, your glutes are just ridiculous looking. But I mean, you really turned it around. I mean, it, it just goes to show you when you really put your mind to do something, you can do it. And a lot of people just don't want to suffer. Do you find that suffering is difficult? Because I know you like to eat. <laughs> Oh man, you know, I, I the, the, my masochistic spirit apparently loves loves the suffering part. Um, there's something about you know just feeling like you're a zombie and one foot in the grave that just really makes you feel alive, I guess. Um, but yeah, the suffering portion, man. I, I like 13 weeks in between. I look at those pictures and I really, I really, really look at the fact of one. I mean, there are a couple takeaways. One is um, time is important. You know, I, I think I'm learning the amount of time it takes my body to, to make certain changes which is why having learned that lesson, I feel like I'm comfortable doing the Cal Pro. Um, I think that six months, you know, seeing what I could do in three months, if I double that time, I think the, that will be a good amount of space to see what can happen. Um, and I think the second takeaway out of that was really um, learning how to dial it up even further um, and realizing that there's a degree of suffering that becomes counterproductive as well. And I think to get ready for the Golden State, I think there was a degree of suffering that I was I was pushing counterproductive because I was so far behind that actually put me in a place where I was not even capable of achieving my best. Um, and so there's there's there are degrees of suffering. There are suffering that's positive, and there's suffering that's you know not constructive. Right. I always I always seem to have found the most brutal aspect of suffering, and I always subjected myself to it. But um, you know, as you as you get older and you get wiser, you realize that there is a balance there. You don't want to go too far. Uh, I made that mistake uh, along the way, and that's why it's good to have a coach to keep an eye on you, pre prevent you from doing silly, dumb stuff. 
And, uh, you know, even the best of us need coaches. And, you know, I never really had a coach. I, I had some people when I first was starting out. So I made all the mistakes myself and then I learned and I applied all the, my mistakes that I made to other people and helped them prevent that from happening. So, um, look, you, uh, I, you really ended the year, I guess, on a bang. Uh, you might, you should have probably done this show in San Marino this come weekend. I know it would have been tough to get back out there with all the traveling, you know, and the, and the job and everything like that. But you really, ba you really nailed it on the head. I want to congratulate you on having a good year. And I think next year is going to be a breakout year for you. We're going to see some, some top placings and uh, people are going to start mentioning the name Gerald Williams a little bit more. And I want to just say I'm proud of you. Thanks, Dave. I really appreciate it. You're, you're one of the guys I've respected um, as a friend, as, as a, in the profession. Um, and so, yeah, I, I appreciate this moment so much because it's, it's, it's a culmination. You know, I've known you for like 10 years now. You know, I was yeah. trying to figure out how to get together and I, I just watching you grow and where you're at now and, and growing with you in, in this space and myself growing, it's just, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the time. Um, and I appreciate, you know, the ability to the access, man. You know, a lot of times people, you know, they get to places and like, oh, you can't find this person or they're not accessible. You've always been accessible. You've always been stand up. You've always, you know, told it how it is. And I really respect that. So thank you, Dave. Well, you're welcome. And, uh, you know, I like to think that the athletes are not always accessible either. You always make yourself accessible. You, you're ready to do press at any time. You never say no to me. And so... In that sense, I think you'll be successful. A lot of people, it's funny, I, I come after these people, they complain, they have no publicity, and then I ask them for interviews, and then they, they, they don't get back to me. So it's, it's crazy. But uh, look, if you don't put yourself out there and let people know who you are, that's going to hurt you in this sport, and that's uh, really a take-home message here. Hey, best of luck with the family over the holidays, and uh, we'll see you after New Year's, and uh, best of luck to you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me on the show. Have a All good right, day. and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by... Quest Nutrition. Visit questnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we'll see you next time.